Hello, this is Andreas from Predictera. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to use events to do a classification analysis of your image data. In this example, I have an image of tablets, and I would like to develop a method that can classify the different tablets based on their spectral profile. To do that, I will use a method called PLSDA. The first thing I need to do is to train the PLSDA model using pixels with known classes. To assign the pixels to different classes, you can do a selection in a contour image. Or, as I will show here, using the scatter plot of a PCA of your image. Hold down left mouse button to select a cluster of pixels corresponding to each tablet class. Then right click and go to add selected to new category. Here, write the name of your category variable. In this case, I will call it tablet type. And then create a name for this class. In this case, I will just call it class A. In the table area, I can now see that I have added my category variable tablet type and I have selected some pixels to be type A. I will now repeat this step by selecting other clusters of pixels. Right click, add selected to, and now you can see the category type tablet type here. So I will just go to new class, and then I will call this class of tablets B, and I'll repeat this for the third group. I'll call this class C. This one I'll call D, and then the last one, I'll select a cluster like this. And I'll call this one F E. I can now change the coloring in the scatter plot and contour plot to show the classes for the category variables. I can also add a legend to my plots. Now that we have assigned the classes, we can create the PLSDA model. But first, let's just clear the plot area to make space for the PLSDA model plots. In the data tree, right click on your data set, go to new model, and then PLSDA model. The default setting for PLSDA of image data in events is to use the same number of components as the number of classes plus one. But it's also possible to choose a different number of components or to use automatic cross-validation. In this case, I would choose to use a default. If you want to learn more, you can click on the question mark down here, which is a help shortcut access the help article for this specific step. In the data tree under the data set, there is now a PLSDA model and the default PLSDA plots have been generated in the plot area. The model overview is showing you how well you can separate the different classes with your PLSDA model. An R2 number close to 1, like we have here, means a strong separation between the classes.
If you drag and drop the PLSDA model from the data tree to the plot area, you can select to generate a number of different plots that are used for, PL for PLSDA. For example, the observed versus calculated plot. This plot is useful to visualize the separation between the classes. In the settings panel, you can change the coloring to be based on classes. and then change the class you want to look at. We have now created our PLSDA model. The next step is to test how well it can classify tablets in a new image. Just to show you how this will be done, I will apply it to the same image that was used for creating the PLSDA model. Ideally, you should use a separate data set to validate your classification. Right click on your PLSDA model and select predict data from file. Select the image file you want to classify and then follow the steps in the data import wizard. An image is now shown with the predicted classes for all pixels in the image using our PLSDA model. In this case, it's not of interest to classify the pixels that are in the background, that is, that are not tablets. To remove the classification for those pixels, right click on the PLSDA model in the data tree. Select Prediction Cutoff and enable X model distance. Click on the plus sign next to the PLS day model to expand it and select the OPS D mod X or OPS distance to model in X space. Drag and drop this to the plot area and select to generate distance to model plot. By sliding the red decrit line, you can set the threshold for what is excluded and therefore predicted as no class. In the table area, there is a summary showing you the number of pixels that are classified to each class.